Broadcasting the boasterous part of the fastest game in the world. We'll strap on your lids and lace up up rook. You're listening to the Barn Chirpers Hockey Podcast. Take a lap! Yeah! Yes. Clap it up, boys. up, boys! Welcome our newest signing, the Enforcer, Corey Gear Freak himself. Welcome to the team. Hey, thanks, man. <laughs> I mean, Thanks, you are already good. part of the team, but you decided to take a leave of absence, and we put you on waivers, and now you're back on the squad. <laughs> yeah, it, it's like that. I'm waiver. Because nobody wanted you because you're from Philly. Nobody wanted me. I was just going to say, yeah, I'm almost like, uh, I don't know, Nick DeLaurier or somebody. We sent you down quality. to Scranton. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And the AHL was like, the, yeah, no. Looks better Scranton uh, pens there, and I uh, brought you back up, and uh, here you're back, on, you're back on the squad. So yes. welcome. You're back to part of the team. Thanks, pal. It's just it's, kidding. You'd never not be on the team. Just kidding. that's right. That's I right. I love you too. So you're always, you're always on the team. Hey, follow us, everybody at Barn Chirpers Pod. Chirp us. Talk shit to us. Oh, oh crap! Yeah, I broke the wrong rule. Corey, we're not supposed to swear. Uh, but oh. uh, yeah, we're that's PG. gonna be hard for me. PG, PG. I know PG, that's PG. why I'm reminding you right now. But hey, uh, yeah, even though I let that one slip early, at Barn Chirpers pod on the instagram more than likely you're probably talking to justin or Corey. i'm not going to be there uh <laughs> you can chirp at me and they'll let me know and then we can chirp back and forth on the show just so everybody knows yeah yeah swearing is allowed in the comments there in the <laughs> comments for sure just code, not actually. on the air yeah. yeah just trying to not do that on the air because i don't know maybe norfolk admirals we'll, we'll yeah. throw that hey, shout that out there. to norfolk admirals we'd love to be a part of that squad Yes. It, yeah. And it's looking more and more like that's probably going to happen. I, I need to reach back out to Brandon. Brandon, if you're listening, we love you. What up, Brandon? Uh -huh. What up, man? What up? So let's get the first line in here, man. Come on. Let's let's do it. Uh, last year, you went you went uh, everywhere, man. You went, went everywhere. Everywhere. I went I went on four trips last year for the for the barn arena tour. Uh there as a, as a as a longtime hockey fan i've always had it on the bu on my bucket list to go to every single arena that the nhl had to offer and i've been talking about it for years and years and i realized before last year like dang i've literally only been to two places what mm. am i doing with my life i am going to go to at least four this year and i did so um yeah uh and so i've i've been to i've been to cap 1 in washington dc to see the capitals many 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 times mm -hmm. and i went to uh pnc to see the hurricanes in 2022 um so those technically don't count to this arena tour but um they are a part of the entirety because hey we like stats and stuff i have a ranking system for yes. the now we love a good list uh, we love a good list and a good explanation um but so it wasn't until, uh, and we'll get to this when, when we get there, of course, when we went to Smashville, where my rankings really developed more. Mm -hmm. So in the previous, in the previous arenas, those previous barn visits, uh, they, the, the rankings, there's not necessarily the same amount of points available to just kind of throw that out there. But mm -hmm. um, so what I ranked on was the outside area of the arena. Okay. The inside of the arena, naturally, uh, the availability of history to the arena that could also incorporate outside or inside the arena, uh, food, what, what, what kind of, uh, food and snacks and stuff do we have available? And then another important one was accessibility to the arena, mm. uh, how easy it is to get there. And then the final, ranking system is community what was what was the vibe like what were uh the fans like you know all, all that good stuff so um again some of these don't have all of those um because i didn't know what the system was uh, at that point like dc i had to really go back and think about that uh pnc i really had to go back and think about that because I, I i didn't i didn't do the the same things that we did like in, in smashville and nashville um, and then when I went on my Florida trips, like I didn't walk around all that stuff. So I had to really think about it. So, uh, so essentially some of these have a possibility of thir a score of 30 would be the best. Uh, some of them only have 20, some of them only have 25. So, uh, let's get into it. Shall we? Yes. Let's do it. So naturally I'm going to start off with Washington DC capital one arena. 
Uh, again, I've been there at least for six games that I can recall. Uh, that, of course, is the Washington Capitals Arena. And let's just get right to it. The outside, woof. Getting to downtown D.C. Bluch. Is, is very challenging. Mm-hmm. Uh, it is cumbersome. If you are going to drive, I suggest you don't. I suggest you go uh, park at one of the many stations and take the metro yep. into Cap 1. That is very easy to do. That is my suggestion. And I've done that before. And that is the most accessible way to get to Cap 1. But if you're driving, good luck, friend. Um, mm. But it is uh, in downtown D.C. There is a lot of places to go inside and outside of Capital One Arena, which uh, is is fun. Not necessarily anything super cool uh, into regard to as like, oh, this is the Caps bar. They don't really have that. But there's plenty of things to do inside of Cap One Arena. There's a movie theater. There's uh, there's there's a there is a bar area, a restaurant, but it's not necessarily this is the Caps bar, which. Uh, put a pin in that because when I get to Pittsburgh, that that comes up. But um, so I gave the outside uh, of DC Cap One Arena a three out of. Uh, well, actually, let's pause one second. One, two, three, four, five, six. So this is a a three a three out of a possible three out of five on this one. Three out of five. Sorry, oh, okay. uh, I didn't mention that. Uh, top, overall, yeah. some of these have a top score of thirty, uh, but it's based on a fi- uh, one to five ranking. Okay. So I also wanted to mention because we went to see Blink One Eighty Two at Cap One. So that and this was my first foray into Cap One, and uh, we. Got say to, I know what you're going to say. What am I going to say? I'm gonna, well, it's about history. <laughs> well, oh, yeah, you've you've got that covered. But uh, on oh, the outside, we okay. went to we went to that restaurant there, yeah, and there's did. a band playing there, and uh, the the band sounded fine, but we're there to see Blink One Eighty Two. And how do you not like bust out so much pop punk? Yeah, yeah. That's, but uh, they they basically were like, "Hey, let's look at this '90s playlist and just play a bunch of '90s songs." It's like, yeah, cool. You're wrong. Yeah, <laughs> who wants a cover band? Exactly. Uh, yeah, yeah. Th- I mean, like I said, there is that. There is a really nice restaurant inside of Cap One too. So th- there is a uh, uh, places and things to do before uh, the game. Uh, the inside of Capital One Ar- Arena. Uh, they have a cool sticks setup uh, of of the of the squad uh, mm-hmm. on the first level there. So whoever's on the current squad, I, again, I don't remember from past years, but currently right now they have everybody's stick uh, of the squad and what stick they use. They have hat trick alley, so everybody that scored a hat trick, they've had um, in in a big like bin of of those pucks of hat tricks that have been scored. So uh, that's a cool little gimmick that I thought. Um, there is a lot of uh, bullets and wizards stuff mm-hmm. all around the arena. Mm-hmm. Uh, even the O'Brien Trophy is displayed, but you know what's not displayed is the Stanley Cup. What for the, the Stanley Cup winning <laughs> Washington Capitals in 2018? As a matter of fact, um, it's a pretty basic just setup on the first level and the third level of cap stuff just basic photos and stuff there's no like championship area there's no Mm -hmm. hey we finally did it after all these years there's and to that point there might be or when we were going up the escalator we saw it on the second level the the suite level that it seemed like there was some type of uh tribute or something to that but we couldn't get there right they wouldn't let us that's only for rich people yeah we got yelled exactly Yeah, so, I was there well before the cup, so I, it's shocking to me. I went there in 2013. This is when Vinny LeCavalier was a flyer, so that was fun for nobody. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I, I I'm shocked to know that they don't have something in for the inside cup. Inside is more for, inside is more that was a couple basketball. years ago. Yeah, wow. It's, there's a lot more wiz- wizards and bullet stuff, which is crazy that there's more bullet stuff because they're the wizards now correct and yeah we had to change the name because it was offensive exactly so, so but there's more bullets gear than there is cap stuff which is just yep. crazy so Bizarre. inside if you're uh keeping track here inside gets a two out of five two yeah out of five. that's about right uh to the same with history here it's getting a one because there's if i I'm getting into one because there's wizards and bullet stuff, but there's no cap stuff. So there's, there is history in the arena, but it's not cap stuff. So 
uh, I give it a one. There's not much to celebrate for a team that finally did it, and that upsets me. So No locks of Joey Juno's hair. <laughs> not, I mean, not even like, I don't know, uh, Ole Kolzig's mask or something. Right. Yeah. I don't know. It, anyway, so yeah, that gets a one. Uh, food, just your basic stuff. Chicken tenders, burgers, fries. It gets a one because yeah. there's food available. Like I gave it a score. Yeah. They yeah. have to serve it there legally. <laughs> yeah, it's available. It's sustenance. Uh, Nothing, nothing fancy there. Uh, so again, going back to kind of my first uh, thing about accessibility, downtown DC technically is great, like I said, but however, getting to DC is is tough. So there is parking at the arena as well if you're prepared to pay thirty dollars. Uh, yeah. Again, it, it's and it's also on the back side of the arena. So unless you know exactly where you're going, you're going to be like Justin and I looking around, like, is this the spot? <laughs> nope, I guess that's not it. Um, <laughs> So, yeah, I would say, again, take the Metro in. You're going to have a much better time Mm -hmm. doing that because the Metro is fun. You get off um, before – it's almost like a – I want to say it's like a skywalk to cap one, so that's kind of fun too. So, anyway, accessibility, it gets a two because if you get to D.C. on a good day, you won't sit in traffic very long. Like when we just went up for not hockey but for the concert, like we got in pretty – pretty easily it wasn't yeah. terrible but um if you get stuck on a rush hour day in dc good luck so yeah. two out of five there for accessibility community the last thing here uh there is a lot of options pre and post game to party like i said uh so plenty of stuff to do inside of the cap one arena you could go outside of the arena and walk any which way and you're going to find a spot to go so that's fun but again there's not really like a caps bar um, and every time I've been there since 2015, it has been a full barn for hockey games. So um, I would like to see it. I have it. Let's see. I, w- I did go last year and they were still, that was in October. So early season that was packed. Um, I would like to go up like now when they didn't make the playoffs and see if it's still packed. Mm, and I would also right. like to see it when they suck to see if it's packed, to see what the, true community is so uh community gets a five out of five though so with an overall score for cap one arena being 14 out of 30 which Mm. is not great no 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 not great at all all right uh anything to say about cap one guys I I I kind of thought it was bizarre it's almost in like a strip mall it's not a standalone building which is very weird um but yeah, like I said, I was there back in 2013. So I, if anything's changed in, you know, 10 years, I wouldn't know, but the barn itself was nice. It was just kind of the setup was a little wonky. Yeah, no, it's a, it's a great arena for yeah. watching and playing hockey. Like there's not a bad, it's a great arena for anything. There's not a bad seat in the house. Right. right. Absolutely. That's what um, I was going to say is we were, we were way up at the top for blank. And that, strangely enough, that was still a really good seat. Right. Yeah. So it was like, right. I've seen concerts there. I've seen hockey games there. I've watched and been a part of WWE there. So like it's, yeah, it's, it's a great arena. All right. Moving on to Carolina again, I had to do a lot of uh, thinking on this one because again, the barn tour, I didn't really, when I went in 2022, I didn't really have, you know, like a, like this, this is the, the things I was going to do. So all I remember uh, sorry, Carolina doesn't get any scores, by the way, because I couldn't really remember, truly. Um, <laughs> I'm just going to talk about it a little bit. Um, there was a lot of tailgating, I remember. So, like, the okay. community seems pretty um, into the Canes down there. They were tailgating like crazy. Like, because I've been – I went to uh, the uh, Commanders when they were the Redskins versus the Eagles back in, like, 17 or 18, I forget. No burst. Um, and, like, that NFL tailgating scene, right? That's oh, how yeah. it was uh, outside of PNC Arena in Carolina. And that Impressive. Kind of, Raleigh represent. Like, wow. All right. Cool. Um, yeah, that's rare for a hockey game, but awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Um, also, when I went, uh, they were playing the Mustard Cats. They played the Preds. Hey, uh, nice. And that was a full barn. That was a Saturday afternoon. So it was a packed house for that. Uh, same, same thing. Not a bad seat in the house at PNC Arena. Um, again, I didn't really do the walk around because I didn't know what the barn tour was at that point. Um, so I couldn't tell you what history was. Um, but accessibility to the arena is really easy. It's essentially not right in downtown Raleigh, but just slightly outside, but really easy to get to. Um, they have a massive parking lot. So parking was simple. Um, 
obviously you had to pay, but uh, instead of going like trying to find a garage, like I like that big open lot feel yeah. way, way more. Um, food, I couldn't really tell you. I don't remember. Uh, so they don't get a ranking on that. But overall, I do want to go to PNC again so I can get a better feel of, you know, history and all that stuff too. But uh, again, community wise, I think they love the, I think Canes fans love the Canes truly. I really think that they, they do. And I don't want to give Batman a, uh, a stick tap, but I feel like they did do pretty well in building hockey in North Carolina. Isn't that wild? It's yeah. It's like, it's better than the idea felt in 97, yeah. you know, but, yeah. and it helps that they're good. It's, it's better than we thought like a year ago. Yeah. We thought yeah. Raleigh didn't care. Yeah, and, dude. And it and does we, seem like just from watching games. And then they on sold TV, out the Winter Classic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It seems like it'd be a fun place to watch a game. Mm -hmm. I yeah. almost went because the devs played them in the second round. Obviously, I almost went to game two because there was available tickets on the cheap. Yeah, and I was like, man, if this wasn't a Wednesday, <laughs> right? Yeah, I'd right. Go. Yeah, uh, dude. I do remember. So, like PNC is is very like you know how uh we'll get to this in, in a couple here when we went to bridgestone how steep it was that incline yeah. PNC was very steep so like oh, okay. my my buddy uh my buddy he had back surgery a couple months before we went there so he was he was fine and recovered and whatnot but going up that steep incline was really tough for him because he just had back surgery it's so it's so steep and you do feel like you could fall backwards and uh, take a tumble. So, uh, right. Dang. Just a word for the wise. It's very steep if you live. If you're gonna go watch up on the 300 level, uh, bring your hiking boots because it is a little bit of a of a climb. But not a bad seat in the house there either. Okay, moving on. So my first actual trip of this past season was to Pittsburgh to yes. see the Pittsburgh Penguins play <laughs> the Vegas Golden Knights. Um, so. Again, this is uh, some of these rankings don't necessarily play a part because I didn't know what the barn tour was at that point. Um, outside, they have a statue of Mario Lemieux, which is cool as hell. Of course, uh, yeah. Other than that, I didn't see anything else, but also at the same time, I wasn't really looking for it. But I saw a statue of Mario right outside, so that gets five out of five for me. Like, yeah, yeah he's worthy. the legend. Mm -hmm. Mortalize him, boom. That that's that's all I need really for outside. Um, the accessibility. It's in downtown. Uh, I walked from my hotel. My hotel was about, uh, it was probably like a, almost a mile walk, right? Ooh. From my hotel. But um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's brightly lit. There's, you know, a lot of stuff happening all over the place. So it's an easy walk in, uh, when did I go? In December, probably not the most, the thing that you want to do in Pittsburgh in December is walk. Yeah. But um, it was easily easy to get to. So it was bright. It was open. Uh, and literally, I feel like if there was a zoom out version to look down from from space, it's like centrally located in uh, its PPG paints arena, centrally located in downtown Pittsburgh. So, um, yeah, there's, you know, buildings and stuff all around it. There's, you know, uh, inter not interstates, but uh, roads all around it. So easily accessible. Again, I didn't have to drive there. So I don't know what that's like, but. <laughs> And again, my hotel was close. So uh, five out of five there. History, uh, or excuse me, let me start uh, inside first. It's very bright, super open, um, and lines moved so quickly. Uh, they have this, this is the first time I saw this like grab and go self-checkout service for, for alcohol. Oh, like, yeah. Okay. You know, one attendant, making sure you don't steal. You pop in there, grab whatever you want. Bing, bang, boom, self-checkout, you're out of there. It's so fast. Respect. Like, you don't have to worry about those stripe readers and, you know, like a cashier that can't understand how to work a card. Uh, <laughs> like it's so fast, like lightning speed, dude. Um, so that, uh, that inside, uh, what else? Uh, I didn't look around much. So that kind of plays into history as well. Cause I did get there a little bit late. I wanted to see pregame. So I got there a little bit late when they were already almost done with pregame. So I didn't really walk around a whole lot. Um, I mean, I did from first level to get all the way up to my nosebleed in the in the third level. But um, inside, it gets a three out of five because, again, bright and open that I really – that grab-and-go service really got me. So I, I, <laughs> yeah, that's I cool. love convenience. Do not inconvenience. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> so three out of five. Uh, if I didn't mention it, uh, the accessibility, five out of five, if I didn't say that. History, like I said, I didn't really have a whole lot of time to walk around – 
uh, which is a bummer. But again, the statue outside of, of Mario, um, that's pretty dope. Um, and then just knowing that they won two cups in that barn, it was pretty cool to me. I get, well, technically it was Melon Arena, a mm -hmm. renamed PPG now, but um, it was really cool to know that they have two cups to their name. And I, I'm, I'm watching, again, it, I'm not a, a, a Pens fan. Uh, shout out to, to Tina. I love you so much. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. But seeing Sidney Crosby play, like that's a pretty big deal. Seeing no, Sidney cool. Malkin play, yeah. that's a pretty Ugh. big deal. Yeah. These guys are, I hate saying that, but yeah. You know what I mean? But like they're legends. They're legends. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, so I get three out of five for the history there. Um, food. So inside the arena was very basic, but – Earlier in the day, I went to a little place called Promanti Bros. Oh, yeah. In Pittsburgh, which is famous uh, for their sandwiches. Bro, I had two of the best sandwiches that I've ever had in my entire Did life. Did you eat them standing up? <laughs> well, yeah, obviously. <laughs> and and uh, so they had this little uh, – eat, like I crushed, I crushed two of them. I crushed a regular um, – uh, pastrami, right? Oh, I love and, a good pastrami, dude. Yeah, and then I crushed uh, one of their. It was like egg. It was like an egg Sammy or whatever, but like the way that they do it. And the owner was talking to me. She's like, "If you get the third one, it's like they're three top sandwiches, and they're massive, right?" She's like, "If you get the third one, it's on the house." And I was so full, I was like, "Dude, oh, I want to because I love a challenge, but um, I can't do it." But anyway, <laughs> arena food was basic. But if you go to Promanti Bros. You're going to have the best time of your life. So five out of five for food. Kind of, it's so facto here. Obviously, it's not in the arena, but um, five out of five for food there. Community. Crowd was loud. Near a sellout. It was a Thursday night. Um, a Thursday right Thursday night versus a non-rival, the Vegas Golden Knights, before we knew that they were going to win the Stanley Cup, obviously. Yeah, right. Um, and there was a lot of places to eat and drink before and after the game. And I said – Talk about a pin from the Caps. They literally have a pens bar right across the street. Nice. Where that's where you go and get rowdy right before you go to the game. Like, that's a literal thing. Like, this is the Pittsburgh Penguins bar. I would so, love to go there and fly or stuff. <laughs> yeah, for real. Get, a, get in a fight, you know, get a little scrap. Yeah. Um, so, again, while I have no allegiance to um, – the Pittsburgh Penguins. I think that's really cool that the community of that. So uh, that gets a five, like I said. So PPG Paints Arena, the Pittsburgh Penguins, gets a 26 out of 30. Wow. Good God. I know, right? <laughs> high wow. score. It's a high score. That's the highest score right now. Yeah. Um, okay. We are to my second trip, which involved you guys being Nashville, Bridgestone Arena. So hey. – uh, I've been talking long enough. Why don't you guys uh, give a couple uh, give a couple uh, notes here? If we start, uh, let's let's start like accessibility, getting there. It wasn't. I don't. I mean, it wasn't that bad. I mean, there weren't any issues. There were parking the garages. The FDA is not that bad. It means it's probably that bad. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we we went the parking garage route, which is always fun. You feel like you might get murdered in one of those, but. Um, it was, I mean, I would say, but it was. But I think it, that's, that's clutch. It was. It, it was, makes sense. It was very visible. You mm -hmm. knew exactly sure. where you had to go. Absolutely. Uh, to park. It wasn't a guessing game. Like, this is parking at the arena. This is how yeah. much it's going to cost. Yep. Absolutely. And it's it's right in downtown Nashville. So you've got, there's a lot going on there, um, as we found out after the game. Um, but the parking garage has definitely come up big. I would say probably a four out of five. I mean, it was it was good. Absolutely. There wasn't, I mean, we didn't have any issues. Shout out to Joe's dog. Um, <laughs> Not my dogs. I'm, I'm dog sitting currently. Actually. Oh, oh, there you go. Shout out to dog sitting dogs. Yes. We love them. We love animals. Um, anyway. Yeah, four out of five. They, they, we didn't have any issues parking. Yeah, I, I, same. Um, you know, I, I didn't have to drive. Cool. You were driving, right? Like you had taken yeah, back over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, like I, it, it was a hop, skip, and a jump. Once you even get out, like you didn't have to go like forever yeah. down the road to, yeah, to actually get there. Right? Yeah, exactly. So yeah, four out of five seems about right. Yeah, I said uh, I said it was pretty simple, um, but obviously, um, 
I didn't know where we were. So like, you know, but it seemed pretty simple and I wasn't driving either. I was probably sleeping in the back. Uh, <laughs> you were like, said, yeah, it's like all of a sudden we were nowhere, but then we were boom downtown. Yeah, yeah man. It was crazy. You, it, it, you pull up on it very, very suddenly the rock and roll, not the rock and roll hall of fame. That's Cleveland. Uh, the country music hall of fame is right yes. there. Yeah. There's a lot of stuff, mm -hmm. which I mean, we'll get to. Yeah, exactly. Um, and again, that's not a, I, when I put it, it's not a knock that it was kind of came out of nowhere. Um, and parking, like we said, right at the arena, which is clutch. Uh, seemingly people were walking from all over the place though, too. So yeah, um, yeah. I can imagine there's more garages elsewhere, or maybe there's a lot somewhere. Um, or maybe people just Ubered in. That could obviously yeah, could be sure. that thing too. But again, being so centrally located, I feel like, again, when we were in seemingly nowhere and then boom, downtown, I feel like that drive in or Uber in is probably not that bad either. It right. definitely could have been a lot worse. And exiting wasn't a hemorrhoid either. No. And I think, uh, glad you brought that up. I think it's key to have a lot of, lot of parking at the arena for out of town people too, like us coming from, you know, right. Virginia beach, Hampton, Virginia. Um, mm -hmm. so accessibility, I actually gave this a five out of five. Yeah. Okay. I thought it was, I thought it was very accessible to get to Bridgestone arena. I can't um, argue with that. Uh, let's go outside, outside what the, what the vibe was outside. Word the F up. Yes. Yes. Dude, so immediately, Party so, atmosphere is what I put. Uh, just a thousand percent. A party atmosphere and immediately. Uh, Corey and I have been grumpy old men about the Nashville Predators existing. Uh, absolutely. <laughs> and immediately I'm like, I can't believe how excited I am to be here. And immediately yeah. I'm seeing sweaters everywhere. I'm like, oh my God, I like the Predator sweaters. Yeah. What's going on here? Dude, we were wrong. Yeah. Yeah. As yeah. we were walking in. And like, just, I was immediately geeked up to go to this game more than i was just on the drive in just the fact that we were going to see hockey right i was just like not only are we going to see hockey we're going to see hockey in nashville yeah. where these yes. people it's clear they love the squad it's just they do. everything going on i put right the, around the arena i put the whole entire downtown seemed ready to f and go like yeah dude it as, was as we came out of the garage up. and walked across the street it was like Everybody's wearing their sweaters, not even necessarily all Pred sweaters. Like we, we saw multiple different sweaters yeah. being yep. worn, um, which is great too. So uh, they support the mustard caps, even though, you know, they kind of always sucked. Yeah. Yeah. Except they, I would say they haven't always sucked, but they've always been either on the cusp or they've been terrible. Right. Right. I mean, they, they haven't have... been like consistently good, make the playoffs, make a good run. It's like, on the cusp, oh, we made it, get destroyed. Yeah, oh, we we're made not it, very good. Out. Hey, we're on the cusp. Oh, my gosh, we're in the finals. Yeah. Yeah. Here's Faith Hill and Carrie Underwood. Yeah. Yes. Um, it was definitely, I say atmosphere, It five out of five for sure. Yeah. I mean, it was, that was arguably the most enjoyable and most fun and euphoric part of the experience was just getting out of Bridgestone and going, wow like there's a lot of options here to go and enjoy yourself and you can get you get a vibe of what what it's like being in nashville like as we're walking around i'm like i could live here this is a blast yeah, yeah. this is a blast you know and it's it wasn't overwhelming it didn't make you feel i've never been to new york city but i can imagine that would probably swallow you or some people and it wasn't it was just big enough a city to make you feel like this is a good time but it wasn't overwhelming yeah, it no. was awesome. Everyone around was it was there was no bad vibes. It was it no, was a good was, time. I think it was just fun. That's way to put it as fun. Like yeah. Everybody seemed to be having fun. Uh, it was like this is the fun thing we're going to go do on a Saturday afternoon. Um, mm, yeah. A matinee game, you know, against the Florida Panthers. Uh, yeah. Like, let's let's just have fun. So uh, I love that, like the franchise, you know, the, those those that are in charge have made the franchise or at least coming to the games fun. Yeah, so that's and, important. And to that point, though, like, so Corey and I, again, being the trying to be the old guys. Yeah, Corey's showing up in his flyer sweater. I'm I'm showing up in my dev sweater, thinking we're gonna be like, yeah, people we're are rebellious. Be, we're, <laughs> people are gonna be bad. Nah, man. Like we we ran into other devs fans, other flyers fans, and they're yeah. like, yeah, what's up? And I got a hug from a random flyers <laughs> yeah. fan. I was like, yeah. hey, you also hate your wife. <laughs> so, <laughs> I, like. 
it, it, to me that shows that not only do they love the predator they just love hockey yeah which yeah. i think that was critically important for me in my experience and i have to echo Corey's uh score five of five at for for out outside of the arena I also put five out of five, and I, I really loved the Smashville marquee right out in front of the arena. Too. Yeah, that's we didn't even point. get there. Yeah, like that was cool. The outside of the arena is beautiful. It's a great setup. You have the Smashville thing, which is great for photo ops. As we got one, it's very, it's an impressive barn from the outside. And you know, just another thing to kind of cap it off on the outside there. Now, granted, I haven't been to all thirty-two barns yet, uh, but Smashville is the only one thus far that I've seen that has like right outside the arena, the camera setup that's like on a big circular loop where they're actually yeah. like showing people walking in and doing, I don't know, I, I haven't, maybe I'll see that more when I see other barns, but so far that's the only one that's like, it just to me adds that party thing. Like, yo, let's get on camera. You want to be yeah. able to do a funny face or something like, I don't know, it's just fun. It's fun. It was. It was a good time. They have it at Wells Fargo as well. Oh, but yeah. it's I mean, it it's but still nobody's having it. fun there. So no, they're not. That's <laughs> it's getting nothing but people that are abusing their liver. They got fun in Nashville. All right, let's move uh move on to inside. I I like the inside a lot. The inside was a good vibe. Um, it it walking around the concourse and the different levels and everything, it they had two big, if you're going there for merch, they had two stores. Yeah. Um, and they were it, even the smaller one uh was still a decent size, you know. So that's what she said. Yeah, but yeah, you know. <laughs> right. I don't think I ate any food, so I can't vouch for the food. Well, we're um, not there yet anyway. Okay. Just yeah, in, right. just inside in general, just inside in general. I, put, I liked it. It was very bright, very bright, very vibrant. I liked the said, yellow, the bright, mustardy, yeah. the mustardy undertones everywhere, the colors. It it lets you know that you were in Nashville to watch a Preds game. To that point, I put it was possibly the brightest barn that I've seen that thus far. Lots of yeah. windows to the outside as well, which was cool. So like when we were walking on the other levels, we could just literally look outside, which mm -hmm, exactly um, you know, the only other when I get to the Florida barns, they have that too. But to this point, like, you know, what is there really to see in Nashville, right? Well, there was a lot to see, actually. You can see the yeah. city. A so, boatload. Yeah. Exactly. So I gave uh, I gave the inside five out of five also. That's what I yeah. was going to go with as well. Yeah, same. Uh, literally, my only gripe is the dude that tried to lie to you about the cat mustard cats. Oh, yeah. oh, <laughs> somebody gets to that, actually. <laughs> uh, so before we get to history – uh we, like you said i didn't get any food well, i did get i got a pizza like so i mean what i saw because i did look at the boards like the arena seemed pretty basic um so technically i'm giving the arena score low it's a, a low score but um justin do you have anything to add to that no yeah i mean i, I would expect it like some type of barbecue or, or something at the arena sure. like something for instance i would have expected uh hattie mays at the arena oh yeah dude right see that right. would have made a difference um so uh but we went to hattie mays after which was some of the best chicken i've ever eaten in my entire it was life. very good um very busy yeah they very, were very busy, busy. Yeah. but it's but if you're in nashville you should definitely check out hattie mays but just be prepared to wait uh, for sure but it's it's worth the wait it's definitely worth it um but so for food, I'm giving it a three out of five because technically Hattie Mays, again, just like when I talked about Pittsburgh, it wasn't in the arena, but sure. we, we did. It was after, you know, after the arena adventures, but three out of five for that because otherwise it was just uh, pretty basic. So uh, why don't we get to the history? Uh, because <laughs> apparently the Mustard Cats won back-to-back -back championships <laughs> in 1718. Yes, they did. Uh, but yeah, I don't really recall a lot of history actually being displayed in that barn. Um, other than I think there was some sweaters, but there wasn't really a lot of even like their cup run. Uh, right. There the, wasn't the, the finals. There wasn't really any memorabilia of that. Uh, but the guy in the big shop, he did say, you know, uh, these are the sweaters that they wore when they went back to back. Uh, and was, uh they didn't, he didn't say stanley cup he didn't even know what it was called back-to-back -back championships he called it yeah <laughs> is that right on, Interesting. Man. so you're telling me that in 16 and 17 before the reverse retros were a thing they were wearing the reverse retros okay huh. yeah when they Weird. won those two championships <laughs> yep. yeah 
But uh, because that was funny, I gave history a two out of five because that was funny. That feels about right. Yeah. yeah. You know, you hate to give them a knock because they don't have any, it, yep. but also they don't have any. So yeah, it's really, like, really uh, Even, there's, uh, there's things that's ha- that have happened that, that, that have happened in Nashville that they should be celebrating. Right. Like, and even, uh, like having PK Subban. Um, yeah. yeah. Paul Korea, <laughs> anything. There you go. Um, so I will say that, and maybe we miss it. It's very possible that because of the history of the cats, knowing that allegedly they found a saber tooth tiger tooth when they were making the dig yeah. for the arena, that's where the cat's name came mm-hmm. from. Uh, but I feel like that should have been displayed somewhere. Maybe there, sure. maybe there was, we missed it. But um, anyway, uh, moving on to community, the last one. I loved that there seemed to be a plethora of places to pregame. Obviously, we're in downtown Nashville. We found out this after the game when we walked down Broad Street or Broadway, yeah. whatever it was. But there are so many places to go. Well, even when we walked in, walked to the arena, like there was multiple rooftop bars, yep. loud, yeah, black same. people, and uh, having a great time. So I love that there's plenty of places to go pregame and postgame. The streets were literally littered with people. Like you mm-hmm. couldn't even yep. walk two feet without bumping into somebody. Um, and not only people, uh, like we talked about, uh, people wearing other sweaters, but there was like 90% Preds gear too. So they yep. love that yep. team. Um, I don't know why, but they do. Maybe it's just because it's that Nashville is fun too. So, uh, for community, I gave that a five out of five. Yeah, dude. Like, likewise, absolutely five out of five. It, it was just a pleasure to be around. Um, and you know, we we sort of alluded to this at that point of the season, like that was a like a a week before the trade deadline where they sold yeah. everything off. Yeah, they yeah. were not going anywhere. Like they made a they made a brief push like after like going towards the end of the season but they technically speaking had nothing to cheer for but they did they showed up and i mean you know they won seven to three that day and well they were playing uh, the florida panthers at that point yeah 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 but like the biggest thing the biggest come away is the thing that i hated the most after the first goal became (laughs) the thing that like i loved the most about all of it was you you loved it you wanted some more of it Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, like that dude. goal horn was the coolest thing yeah. that's ever happened. Yeah. yeah that was pretty it dope. was a blast. And how can you go wrong with Tim McGraw swinging a huge fish? <laughs> yeah. Well, you can't. You for can't. everybody to enjoy. Yeah. Don't know what it is about that predator scoring. No, but I, mm-hmm. I like it. <laughs> I love it. And absolutely, I want more of it. Uh, so, Bridgestone Arena of Nashville gets a 25 out of 30. Ooh, you love to see it. Yeah. A step behind Pittsburgh, but you still love to see it. Yeah, if only you had a little history, Nashville. I know. Yeah, right? it would have put would have put you over the top there. Uh so moving on, I took a little trip towards the end of the season, uh, at the end of March to Florida. And the first stop that I made was to FLA Live in Sunrise, Florida to see the Florida Panthers, as we just spoke about when I watched them, we watched them get beat seven to three in Nashville. Yeah. Uh yeah. So it was a, uh, they were playing the Chicago Blackhawks. So I wasn't expecting much. Uh, <laughs> and at this point, they hadn't really started to make their push yet either. So they were still uh, out of the playoffs. They weren't doing great. Um, but I was like, all right, let's go. Um, so accessibility to the arena. Um, so, like, again, I love a huge parking lot, as we talked about from like PNC. So FLA Live has a huge parking lot. Like, when you get there, like, there's so many places to park. Um, so that's great. Uh, and it wasn't, um, they didn't have like attendance. You had to one, uh, like a little bit of a knock is like, you had to know beforehand to download an app to Mm. buy buy your parking Mm. pass. But thankfully I got my tickets through Ticketmaster and they sent me an email. So it was, it was pretty simple. But if you didn't know that, like when you pull in, it gives you like the instructions to download the app and stuff. So like that could be a pain in the butt, but um, I mean, accessibility, it's secluded from like the city of Sunrise, which is close to eh, sort of close to Miami, but it is kind of secluded and out there. So um, there isn't necessarily a whole lot to do before or after um, you're going to have to, you know, either Uber or drive. Right. Uh, but I do, give, I do give it a five out of five because it was right off the interstate. Like I said, super easy to park. Um and uh, I love a big parking lot and I don't, I hate parking garages because for whatever reason, it's easier for me to remember in a huge open lot where I am. Yeah. With 
you know, with like large numbers saying what yep. lot you're in yep. than being in a parking garage. You remember what level am I on and what tiger space am I in? You know, like, yeah, right. Just take me no. to D3. Yeah, yeah exactly. Uh, so accessibility gets a five out of five for FLA Arena. Uh, going to outside, dude. FLA is a party, legit. There was cornhole out there, kids mini games outside there with uh, like a tent where they can shoot shoot pucks. There was like a little shooting range for like a uh, cardboard goalie gimmick. There was okay. a PS Five setup with NHL Two K Twenty Three. There was. Uh, like I said, shoot a puck. There was vendors with free samples of drinks. Uh, like I said, I PS5, know. a blow up Panther. Like you could take a like a like um how they when they enter like from the benches to start the game, like walk yeah. through, through. They had that outside too that you could do like pictures and stuff. It was the walk up from the lower level of, of uh, the parking lot. Uh, then they had this cool. massive blow up chair thing, uh, and then they had a live band playing too. Nice. Why not? And you know what they were playing, Justin? They were what? playing hits, like <laughs> rock hits, pop punk hits, uh, and up, more upbeat country hits. Like they were jamming. It was a party, guys. I absolutely loved that. Five out of five for the outside for FLA. Right on. You guys did it right. Um, here's an awesome thing about the Florida Panthers. Inside, first and third level uh, was super open, easy to walk through, Um and this, uh, we'll kind of put a pin in this because I'll go back to a couple of the other arenas that I didn't think about it at the time. But easy to walk through, um, like, and just super open, super fun. Um, and they have, I'm going to pair this up with history. There is, and I sent you guys these pictures too. There is so much history of the Florida Panthers in FLA Live, a team that has never actually won anything. There is so <laughs> much history here. They have... <laughs> All of their sweaters from inception till present. Not only that, like all of the side quest sweaters, AHL yeah. teams, ECHL teams, WHL teams, OHL teams, like all of their uh, uh, affiliates, all of those sweaters displayed all over the place. Also, history of guys, obviously, like our boy Yarmir Yager. Uh, yes. I mean, um, um, Luongo. Uh, they had all these like, things with past history which is crazy again for a team that has never won anything but they had more history than any of these other uh barns that we've talked about which wow uh, you know that's that's pretty uh pretty wild to me not only that like photos and descriptions of stuff too so five out of five for history inside gets a four out of five because the second level was literally bare and boring like uh -huh. so, you kind of lost me there with the first and third level being super open, super fun. A lot of things to see middle level is like, where's my meat for my sandwich. Yeah. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Where's the meat? Where's, where's Bread the sandwich. Ed Jovanovsky? Uh, <laughs> where's stuff? the meat, you know? Uh, so they lost a little bit on there. Um, food was nothing out of the ordinary for Florida. Your basic chicken tenders and fries, burgers, pizza. Um, so you only got a one for me there cause you had food. Um, so, you know, uh, <laughs> the community at FLA fans were rowdy, which is crazy to see because they were playing the Blackhawks. They mm. were not a great team at that point, And the Blackhawks obviously are the Blackhawks, but it was a packed barn crowd was rowdy for them, which is cool to see. Uh, same thing like I said with the outside tailgates were going on there too. Not as much as in Carolina, but they were, uh, there was some tailgates going on. Um, and, uh, not really anyone seemingly, uh, close. What did I say? Close to pregame, but that doesn't affect it terribly. Uh, I'm not sure what I meant for that. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter. Uh, <laughs> but community gets five out of five. Yeah, nice. Well, um, I also forgot to mention in FLA they have. Uh, it is on the second level, but uh, obviously in the arena they have a whole dance area with cheerleaders, a dance team, and they do like dance team breaks. Which oh, is, there we go. It's a, a fun thing, right? Yeah, Give right? us something to do in between commercial breaks, right? Yeah. Look at this dance team doing dance stuff, doing backflips and stuff. That's cool. So FLA Live Arena in Sunrise, Florida gets a 25 out of 30. Oh, very nice. Right there with Bridgestone. Tied with Smashville. If only they could have bumped up a couple of things. 
They could have overtaken Pittsburgh. Um, I, I will. Well, I'll say this for for the end. Moving on to the final barn, because obviously the next day I drove to Tampa Bay to see the Tampa Bay Lightning at Emily Arena, and they also played the Blackhawks because the Blackhawks <laughs> were back to back. Also, uh, the Blackhawks took Florida to overtime, but then they lost in overtime. Florida wins in overtime with like a couple seconds left. So that was fun. Yeah, Ice Cats. <laughs> yeah. Uh, moving to Amelie Arena. Accessibility. Uh, the arena is right in downtown, and you can get there right from the interstate, which is great. But uh, parking is an atrocious act, act to try to do. Like, you, if I knew where I was going, it probably would have been better but obviously I didn't know and nothing was clearly marked. So it was terrible trying to uh, get to the arena and park. Um, I drove around for probably 20 minutes trying to find where to park. Um, but at the same time, I do feel like it's a typical big city downtown parking situation. Like you just have to know where to go. Right. right. Or, or put the right thing in your GPS and, and you can find it. But I did end up like talking to a cop on who was directing traffic. I was like, where can I park? And he's like, if you go right up, right up the road there, turn right into that embassy suite, still valet for you. I'm like, all right, that cool. So, uh, <laughs> so I didn't get valet parked. It was twenty bucks, but you know that's not terrible. Did so, you throw your keys at him? <laughs> I did not. I handed them nicely because he was uh, dealing with my vehicle. I like I like a nice little underhanded toss, not a threatening one. <laughs> like a, right. here you yeah. go, bud. Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, uh, accessibility three out of five, just because again. I mean, maybe that's more on me because I didn't know where I was going, but I feel like you should have clearly marked things, especially for a big attraction like going to a hockey game, you know? Right, right. Uh, the outside. So there were so many statues outside. Uh, John Cooper's got a statue. Um, I hate that guy. <laughs> I know. Uh, there was huge marquees too. Like, I forget exactly what they say. I have to look at my pictures, but, you know, it had like, the typical faces, Stamkos, Vasilevsky, Hedman, um, you know, just big marquees on the arena, which is uh, which is pretty cool, I, I think. Yeah. Like just big, inviting arena, you know. Um, huge walk-up gates. It almost seems like you're walking into a castle in a way. Okay. Um, they probably did that on purpose, so that's fun. Um, it did seem like it was a big deal that I was walking into this place. So I like that. Like, yeah, let, let me know this is a big deal. Let me know that. You know this this squad is is the squad, even though yeah, even though we make it them. feel like a cathedral. Yeah, exactly. Um, so outside there seemed like there was a a stage for a band to play, but I did get there a little bit late, so I don't know if they stopped playing or what. So I don't know for sure, but uh, maybe it was fun before I got there. But when I got there, everybody was starting to go inside. But it was still like, maybe it was the Blackhawks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, but nothing going on other than other than like they had pop up bar, uh, you know, pop up bar areas outside. So it definitely, I was a little bit sour considering I was just in FLA the night, the day before and there was such a party feel. Right. Um, this did not have that. So, uh, but three out of five for the outside. Um, and I say three out of five for accessibility, right? Yep. Yeah. 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 Okay. All right. So moving to the inside, dude. Okay. I'm going to go to the third third level first because that's where my seats were. The third level in Emily Arena is so unbelievably cramped. Like mm. there are so many places to get something to eat or drink, but those like those areas come out so far, right? And then the arena to walk to your seat also comes out so far. So literally if you're watching this right now, you can see how tiny that space is. Mm. Try fitting, you know, how many people can fit on the third level? Let's say 10,000. Yeah. Several hundred folks having to pee. <laughs> like, it's so cramped trying to get through there. And like, you know, being somebody that is always on a mission, I'm like, just get the F out of my way, please. Yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. There were so many people standing around. Like, it's so cramped. So that definitely takes a hit for me because why would you have the, 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 where the most people are going to be the third level. Why would you have, why wouldn't you have that be more open? You know, that's a that terrible, is bizarre. terrible design for me. So poor architecture, poor mm -hmm. architecture. The walkway is so narrow for a lot of traffic. Uh, going down to the second level club level is fine. I could actually get on the club level. Uh, 
nobody uh, carded me or anything like that. I said, get, get out of here, punk. Um, <laughs> lots of suites, lots of bar area, uh, lots of places to sit and chill, um, and a big rooftop art, outdoor area as well, like for smokers and stuff, uh, mingling, hey, know, whatever. Um, that's what people do, I guess, talk to strangers. I don't know. Um, <laughs> So the second level is fine. Um, I did get a little turned around. It's kind of like a maze up there. So I kind of lost my way, but I, I figured it out. And then the first floor is way more open. Huge areas to sit and actually watch the game, though. So, like, you have, obviously, your first level where you walk down to your seats. But there's huge areas, like couches and stuff, where you can just chill and watch the game from there, too, which is also a good seat, which is um, kind of cool, I thought. If you don't want to sit in your little teeny tiny sit, you can just sit on the couch, um, rub elbows with, with a stranger, you know, if you want to do that. Hey. Um, but you could be uh, – it's almost like 10 rows up. Like you're only about 10 rows off the ice, and you can watch the game from there. Um, had I known this, I would have actually probably watched the game from down there and not – I mean, third level was great. Um, like my seats were, were great. But if I'd known – because I did – again, I got there late, so I went right up to my seats – Walked around the third level, sat down, game started. First intermission, I went down to the suite level, walked around, back to my seats. Second intermission, I went down to the first level, and then I hung out there for, for the third period. So, um, the couch sounds like a cool deal, though. That's a good little, that's a good little nugget. It's pretty cool, actually. Yeah, I, I really dug it. I got to give props to them. But uh, so inside gets a three out of five, mostly because of that third level being so cramped. Okay. Food. Uh, they actually had poutine, pork tacos, oh. Nippin' Docs, cheesesteaks, and sweet potato tater tots. Wow. I did Shout out out Emily. Yeah, that's crazy in Tampa. All yeah. those things of all places. Uh, so five out of five for food there. Like they stole the show on the on the food tour here. Like I did not expect poutine to be in Tampa Bay. Like any yeah. anytime poutine's involved, automatic five out of five. <laughs> I mean, obviously the Canadians are are in charge uh, down there at Emily Arena, so we're here for yeah, it. Yeah, for real, for real. Uh, I'm gonna save history for last. Community. So the community here at Emily, like I was so happy to see. Number one, they were they were hyped, and it looked like it was a sellout there to play the Blackhawks. Yeah, not to mention that right. Um, and it was really cool to see there was so there was. Literally across the board, every single demographic you can imagine was at this game, wearing right. a sweater or wearing a shirt, yeah. a cap, a sweatband, like, but repping the squad, right? And yeah. say, we'll say what we will about Tampa Bay, like whatever, but it was so cool to see literally so many demographics of people that don't look like me loving the game of hockey. And then yeah. not only that, but they're repping the squad. Like, dude, I love that. And NHL, maybe take a couple pointers like hockey. Yeah, really. Everyone's supposed to be. Yeah, you know? exactly. So Tampa Bay is doing it right. Um, so shout out to that. So um, not really sure what the pre-post party situations were in Tampa because I had to drive back to get home in time uh, uh, for a Sunday concert that I had that night. So I had to leave uh, right after the game. But five out of five for community. History. Okay. How many uh, – just just a question for the audience here. Uh, how many Stanley Cups have the Tampa Bay Lightning won in their entirety? Two, right? Three. Three? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, they they, they, they beat Calgary, Calgary and yeah. it should have been the Flyers against the Flames, but anyway. But anyway, uh, okay, yeah, so so they've won three Cups, right? So there, yeah. there should be like a whole lot of uh, – stuff in Emily Arena about those three cups, shouldn't you'd there? think, especially since think. two were recent. <laughs> yeah, you would think so. Yeah, um, there's not. They have down in that first level where I was talking about the couch area, they have like a, a trophy case, right? With all the awards that have been won, you know, team and individual, right? Okay, that's that's yeah, that's cool. There is like five photos of championship of them winning their championships. There are three championships. There's like five. Weird. Wow. And and they're not in a row. Like they're just kind of like bing, bing, bing. That's it. They're not spread out. There isn't like jersey uh, sweaters. There's not. It's so, it is the worst, worst uh, Stanley cup celebrating that I've seen. I mean, and I'm actually even putting, uh, this above DC who doesn't really have anything at all. Like mm. 
for winning back-to-back cups and for having three in total, you should have so much memorabilia and stuff yeah. about you winning these three Stanley Cups. So it leaves a lot to be desired. I'm giving it a two out of five because, yeah, they have the trophy case, and that's only the only one that I saw, and that's kind of cool. But, dude. No I mean, life-size wow. replicas of uh, Marty St. Louis. Yeah. That's disappointing. Martin? Yeah. Do yeah. better. Yeah, no love for Vazzy? Like, uh, come on. No love for Vazzy? Yeah. Um, do better. Do better, honestly. So two out of five for that, which leaves a total of 21 out of 30 for Tampa Bay. So oh. that means that Pittsburgh right now is the best barn with 26 out of 30. Wow, that, well, that was the part, yeah, but... that's gross. But like, <laughs> that's the experience. What can what can you say? Yeah, like, I'm exactly. determined to make your experience at Wells Fargo better than PPG because they I'm, make paints in it. Pittsburgh. I'm here for it. So, well, to that point, we we need to get on the penalty kill here because this was supposed to be a 30 minute. Uh, it was supposed to be real quick, but you know, it was supposed to be real quick. Uh, Boys and talker. So, I think next next week we will expound on this thought. This is how we're going to get out of here. I think though, I, I pulled out a couple dates because we we're going to do another roadie this year. So I pulled out a couple dates. We can think about these dates and we can examine the schedule release a little bit more and and come up with with more of a conversation for next week. But I got October the 12th, the Kraken visit Nashville. So that would uh, be a hike, but it would be cool to see the Kraken play the Preds. That would be neat. Uh, November 19th, the defending Stanley Cup champion Vegas Golden Knight visit uh, Philadelphia to play the Flyers. Hey, So November, that that would be pretty cool. That means that. Uh, In January, uh, we have uh, Vancouver coming to Buffalo and uh, Tampa going to Buffalo. That's January 13th and 20th, respectively. So that's back-to-back weekends. Buffalo would be fun. And yeah, yeah that's definitely an arena I want to go to. Uh, I also have the Sens are going to be in Raleigh October 11th. So that would be fun to see the Sens and Canes. Yeah, like I said, I I do want to go back to PNC so I can actually I, go down. Yeah, I definitely want to go there too. Yeah, I'd love to go on a Whalers night. Yeah, dude, that, that would be would fucking be sick. cool. Effing cool. Yeah, bleeping cool. Uh, bleep okay. cool. It's all right. Uh, then the Sharks are going to be in Raleigh October 27th. Ooh. So that was the last one I, I, I took down. Um, I also noticed that the Preds are going to be in Raleigh for a preseason game in either late September or early October. I was thinking about going to that. Just that would be can't, sweet. Can't imagine tickets. Are yeah, too I, mean, much. I, don't even, I don't even care Dude. if it's preseason games either. Like whatever. Just, yeah. Hockey's hockey. Yeah. Just, I, I want to go. So. But uh, there we go. Uh, so if you're watching this, let us know which one you think we should go to. We're gonna we're gonna ruminate on it, and then uh, we'll we'll talk. We'll discuss at great length next year's hockey roadie. I think yes. I think that's next week's show. Absolutely. And, uh, also, if you've been to uh, one or multiple barns, leave that in the comments of what your favorite one is as well. Or you can chirp us at Barn Chirpers Pod, and uh, let us let us know what your favorite barn is, even if that's what we talked about. I think as we do these two, as we get more and more roadies under our belt, I think a cool list to do would be like the best players we've seen in person oh, type of deal. Yeah, I like I that. I think that'd be fun. That would be cool yeah. too. Officer so, Bob, not one of them. Yeah, no, exactly. He did good after we saw him and then regressed to the mean. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. it'd be like that sometimes. It does be like that sometimes. So uh, cool. All right, boys. Uh, well, we'll, uh, we'll, uh, Take a breather here, and uh, we'll talk talk to everybody uh, next week. So uh, stick taps and sellies, boys. Collab it up. Yeah. Collab it up, boys. Broadcast. End it.